with all of this content that the art team made, we had to, you know, it had to be structured in a certain way so the player could parse it. So putting things into rows, you know, where they went like level one, two, three, four, so that you could sort of look at a glance and like figure out what the pattern was in this content when you're browsing it, kind of like getting a, a view of a map from far away and also up close. So Ocean was making this huge diversity of like parts and rebuild creatures and vehicles, whatever. But there had to be basically some taxonomy through which we were organizing these parts so the player could understand, okay, this is a carnivorous mouth and that's an herbivore. And this is a better mouth than that one. And so we had to come apply some, you know, topology to these things. <laughs> this, <laughs> this was one of Will's creatures. <laughs> like I said, art directing a million incompetence, like I was <laughs> I think one of our um, other challenges with that we've been debating a long time with the editor, it, c it comes down to the editors, is how to make a creature evolve to look intelligent. What, you know, what makes a creature look like something that you are meant to ride on, like you know, a, a horse, versus um, something that's an intelligent creature. So we, we've tried to address that in some of the editors, but it's, it's an ongoing problem to identify. When, you're, when you go and fly down to a planet's surface, which of the creatures that you're looking at is the intelligent one? I think it's hats. It's, we decided it's hats. hats. So. Yeah, Jenna was concerned. You were convinced it was standing upright. It only bikes were intelligent. I was, I, I, for, a, for a while I had. tried to argue that if we um, procedurally moved their head to be the highest thing on their body as we came into the tribe game, then that would be uh, interesting. I, I lost that battle. Yeah. But it was, my, it was my Pluto versus Goofy argument. Like, you know, you, you, one of them you identify as a pet, and one of them you know is... It, Okay. A peer of Mickey, and how do you, how do you, well, one's wearing clothes. One has a hat. But, Pluto versus Goofy <laughs> argument, yeah. Okay, so, so, I'm just going to explain what you're seeing so, here. So, so, this, so, this was an early prototype about um, sort of like, you know, thinking about the editors in terms of blocks. You saw like Ocean's prototype about like sort of the morphing blocks, like each one is this magical piece of Lego. And one of, the, one of the challenges of designing the editors as toys is figuring out like, well, how do we put intelligence in, this, in the sort of the system that composes them? That sort, of, that sort of represents what an artist might do. And for almost each one of our editors, we did 2D prototyping, tried to abstract out the problem in the three dimensions, you know, but basically solved it in the two-dimensional case first. So here's, a, here's like an early creature editor. It's like, you know, think about, you know, the creature as being this, you know, hierarchical structure where you can attach limbs to it, and then they sort of move like these toys. So um, we went through probably 10 or 15 different metaphors for how the player would think about the editor and how these parts would relate and connect to each other. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite ones is uh, this one, where like we're, so th this is like so we're trying to figure out like you know, what makes it like, how, what, like whenever like all the creatures I was seeing that like our artists on our team were making all had certain patterns to them, right? Like there was something about them that made them look cute, made them look good. And so what I did is spent like a long time trying to talk to one of our character artists, trying to figure out like you know what are the rules that you're using? Like clearly the artist has certain rules in their head that they're using. To, to, to make something, and I was like, well, you know, I want to find out what those rules are, and then make them into a toy that's fun to touch. So when the player comes in, they just have this toy they're playing with, and it's making all this good looking stuff, because the, the toy represents what makes a good creature. So this is an experiment about um, thinking about some of those artist rules for making creature bodies. It turns out that all creature bodies for like, that a cartoonist would make are like these bean shapes. Yeah, and usually when you learn to draw cartoon characters, like first you draw the circles and you connect them with curves. And so, again, this is kind of deconstructing this massive task of how we make basically Maya for a 10-year-old down to very constituent design problems. You know, how do we do the torso? How do we do the parts plug-in? How do we manipulate the camera? And solving those kind of individually. And here's a, another, another, like a, one of the biggest challenges was the, you know, 2D versus 3D thing. And actually, I had to learn, like, I had to, like, this trial by fire, I had to learn how to do some 3D programming to, uh, to, to, to get to this point. But it was like, you know, when it, on a, a mouse is a 